The Unoffendable, that's uh, our series. By the way, if you haven't picked up one of the books uh, we're giving away, they're both on the table and at the guest table tonight. Um, uh, just please just pick one up. We, we'd love for you to have it. Uh, so we're, we're doing this series, Unoffendable, A Better Way to Live. Uh, and, and the idea here is that in John 10, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it to its full. Uh, and that life doesn't, d- doesn't begin in heaven. That life begins uh, the moment we come to faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, there, there's a verse that, that, that says that, that, that life is, is about walking with Jesus. That's, where, that's how, how uh, we regain the life uh, that we were created for uh, in that relationship of God. So, so this unoffendable, better way to live, it's, it's not about a small portion of our life. It's not about this little place over here or about over there or, or in the other place. It's, it's a frame of reference, a frame of mind. It's, it's a, a, a paradigm of our entire life. Okay, so that's, that's the, uh, the, the idea here. It's, it's a, a, a panorama view, okay? Uh, it, it's not something to be put into a little corner. It's, it's panoramic. And, I, and I, I'm going to say that every time we get together because I think it's so important. Okay, so a fun, uh, unoffendable, better way to live. And, and we began all this saying unoffendable. What's, what's that, you know? Um, and and uh, we, we, de- we defined offended as being angry and having resentment. And unoffendable means to let all that go. And, and the first uh, n- night we said that, that the Bible is really clear. It says, even the righteous anger man does not do the will of God, James. So let that stuff go, because you're not going to do good stuff with it, right? In, in the Old Testament, it says that anger resides in the lap of fools. I don't want to be a fool, do you? You see, when we live with anger in our lives, it's not the best way to live. And the Bible says, finally, we're fools to do it. And we looked at other verses that says, let go of that anger, let go of that anger, get rid of it, get rid of it. Um, and the foundation for all that, of course, is, is all of the anger that every single one of us deserves was finally laid on Jesus. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Right? All the anger was taken care of there at the cross of Jesus Christ. All the anger that should be on you, on me, on every single person. God has no anger left for us. And we ought not live in anger towards others. Uh, and then we, I, I, this, this tree is, is kind of the, the, the picture I want to get. The idea of being unoffendable and, and, and letting go of angry. That's the root system and the trunk. And, and last week we talked about living in beautiful expectation, gratitude versus anger. And we used the glasses. Remember that? And, and, and we said, hey, there's, there's three things we want you to see here. We want you to see that, that, that every single human being is corrupted by sin. So when we say something like, I can't believe she did that again. Really? You know? She's only been doing it for 20 years, right? And you, I, I can't believe the politician lied to me again, right? Really? Huh? I mean, just just to, to get that vision, right? That this is how people are, man. Right? We foul up. And when we live offendable lives, what we're saying is, we're expecting people to be what they aren't. And we're going to hold them accountable. And we're going to be angry about it. Except when it's us, of course, right? Uh, and, and then the, 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 the second thing that we wanted to see, though, is to open our eyes then and see when someone does something that's good and right and full of grace, that we see that as a wonderful exception. And we give thanks to God for it. Have you had some of those this week? Have you looked for them? When you see one with your husband or wife or children or mom or dad, do you say, wow, wow, isn't that amazing? And then the last uh, thing we looked at as far as what we see is to see, things, to see other people like an artist. And that, that's how Jesus saw the disciples, even though they kept fouling up and fouling up, he knew, that he knew they could be something better, huh? And that's how he sees us. And that's how he empowers us to see each other. Even those who are far, far from God, he empowers us to see them as people created in the image of God. And all they need to do is come face to face with Jesus to be recreated in him. Today, tonight, we, uh, we, we do this branch, if you will, living in grace, received and given, being versus having to do. When I was a senior in high school, I, I dated this girl, and um, 
it, it I, I, you know, we, we met in school, and, and she's a very nice girl, and, and we kind of hit it off, and I asked her out, but from the moment I picked her up on that first date, and, and the dates we had afterwards, I could never do anything right, right? Do, do you know what I mean? So, so I, I, I pick her up, and she says, why is the car dirty? And I washed it, right? And, 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 and then she said, well, why, why are you wearing that, you know? Why haven't you gotten a haircut yet, right? And on and on it went, and, and it, was, it was like, that's just, I just could never me measure up to her, right? Um, and, but she was really a very nice person. Uh, obviously, we had connected in school, and I thought she was very nice. I thought she was pretty too, right? Okay, so, 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 we, so we're going out, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm by, by the way, I probably deserved all those things, guys, right? I probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I deserved, so, so I'm, I'm not saying I, I was better than she thought. But, but after a while, it really hit me that, that I just couldn't like, continue like that. I couldn't, I couldn't live like that, right? Always having to measure up and, and never having measured up. Uh, and, I, and I remember I, I talked with her and to be honest, she wasn't liking it very much either. It wasn't a lot of fun for her to go out with somebody that didn't measure up, right? That, that, that did, didn't meet what, what she thought I should have been. You see, that's, that's living under the having to do. But when you can live under the just being who you are and being accepted Maybe not because you deserve it. <laughs> Maybe because all those things are still wrong, but, but the other person loves you and, and gives you that love and that grace. That's the way to live, huh? That, that's kind of what we're talking about here. You see, before God, we... Um, We don't have to live having to do. We can live just being. And because of that, we can live a life where we don't force others around us to have to do in order to be accepted by us. We can give them a little grace and we can receive them for who they are. And, and the crazy thing is that when you live that way, when you, when you know that grace, and, and you live in that grace towards others, it finally is the only thing that really can change us. Isn't that crazy? You know what I mean? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Go ahead. These verses are, are so amazing. They, they just they bang this point home. Uh, in Romans, by now, but now, you see that little word apart? Um, these words fly through us and, and we, don't, we don't stop. It's so powerful. You know what I, what I do with the kids? It's this or that, right? That, that's kind of a, a little word that separates everything, right? But now, apart from this, this is what's true. You see what I mean? Yeah, it, so, so apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the whole Old Testament testifies, right? The righteousness of God is made known in Jesus Christ. What is that righteousness of God? That he was righteous in your place. And that through faith, that righteousness is given to you. It's called grace. Jesus did it all. It is finished. This righteousness then is received through faith. By grace, you are saved through faith. Grace is this undeserved love. This love that's not earned, but is given. And again, we have this separation uh, 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 apart from anything we can do. We know the power of this. 
Isn't that what we try to do with our children? And when we foul up and we make it about jumping through hoops, we find that we have very little power in their life. Every relationship that we have, when it's a relationship that receives me by grace, it has power in my life. And if it's a relationship I can give grace in, I can have power in the other one's life. Right now, God's Spirit is touching your heart with this truth of God. Um, There may be a whole lot of things that you don't understand about God. But this is the foundational thing. Jesus went to the cross because he loved you unconditionally, not because of the hoops you could jump through, but because he created you and you were his and he wanted you back as his child. To have a relationship with God is not something you have to jump through a hoop to get or continually jump through a hoop. It's continually offered to you free every day in Jesus Christ. Right now, God's spirit is touching your heart with this, and you may be saying, wow, how can that be true, man? How could that be true? Because the only begotten Son of God died for you. And he gives you what he earned. Forgiveness and connection to the Father again. So I've got some questions for you, right? Where do you view relationship with God not as being, but as having to do? You know, you know it's interesting. Uh, um, when, I talk about, when I talk grace this way, I know that some of you will go home and you'll have the yeah buts. You, you really will, you know? You'll say, well, that sounds right, and I know that's what the Bible says, but, but I don't know about this, right? I don't know, but you, you mean, you mean it's, it's not anything I do? You mean I don't have to do anything? Well, how about that guy? See, you have to do. Well, I mean, we're so tied into doing, see? When you talk about grace, there is not a scintilla of doing involved with it. Jesus Christ did it all. Where... Do you let doubt creep into that? Where do you try to have relationship with God by doing other than just being his child? And how's that working for you? Here's another one. Where do you look uh, for your value, not in being in relationship with Jesus, but but on what and how much you can do and how fast you can do it? Here's another yeah, but. You mean, it, it's, it mean life is just about sitting and being job of the hut? Right? Is that what life is about? Just they're doing nothing? Of course not. But where do you find your value? Does it spring forth from this relationship, who you are in Jesus Christ, from being in him? Or do you tie it to stuff you do? Or stuff you can accomplish? or how much you can do and accomplish. And how's that working for you? How do you think it will be working for you in that last breath you take? Here's another one. Where in your relationship with others do you make it about having to do rather than being? Where do you put that on others, right? I was, I was driving, um, when was I was driving up here this week and oh, it was Wednesday night, and I was kind of late. And I got behind somebody that only wanted to go 20 miles per hour in a 45 per mile per hour zone. You know what I mean? And I was trying to be unoffendable. <laughs> and I couldn't get over. And, and what was I saying? I was saying, hey, I'm putting this on you. You don't go faster, I'm going to get ticked off, right? And, and, we, and we laugh about that. But where do we do that with our husbands and wives? Where do we do that with our children? Where do we do that with our parents? Where do we do that with those around us? And how's that working for you? 
And where do you habitually look at people this way? Where is it a way of life? And how's that working for you? You see, God has a better way. <laughs> it's the way of grace. It's the way of being in Jesus and receiving others for who they are and giving them a little grace. Um, amazingly, it's the only way that can really change things. Change how you live and change how others live. It's the way of God's wisdom to live unoffendably. Go ahead. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <laughs> Where are you weary and heavy laden? Trying to find meaning and purpose and greatness in how much you do? Where are you weary and heavy laden in trying to find relationship with God by jumping through hoops? Where are you so tired and weary in your relationships because you live offendable? You live angry. You, you, you live in a way that cuts off relationship. Jesus says, come to me. Come and, and rest in me. Receive identity as my dear child. Receive the reality that I've got it all covered. You don't have to go to war. You don't have to fix somebody. I, it's my job, not, not yours, right? <laughs> Receive it and, and live in it brand new. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus wants the very best for us right now. It's why he, he says to us, live unoffendable lives. Put away anger. Don't live as if you have to achieve great things um, so, that, so that I'm with you. Or, or, or don't live as if somebody else has to jump through hoops so that they're acceptable to you. This is not a hard thing, he says. Just trust me. Trust who you are in me. Receive the grace, see? And give the grace. It's the best way to live. <laughs> well, uh, this, a, a Christian wrote this, for a, a book I read a long time ago, and he just said, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. So how, how can we do that? And, and, and as I thought about this, and he makes the point in this book again, um, this is a different author, by the way, he, he makes the point again that, that, that it's very hard uh, to, uh, to live this way when we live such fast lives, right? He says stuff like this in the book. He says, do nothing, doing nothing turns out to be very countercultural. You ever thought about that? And, and he tells this story about himself. How, um, how he could, um, he had this opportunity to go to law school and become a lawyer. Uh, and, and when he, as, as he researched it, he realized that he would not have hardly any time with his children or his wife. And so he decided to take a part-time job as a DJ. And so he now had lots of time, right? Lots of, in fact, the neighbors were saying, the, 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 the neighbors were saying, uh, wow, don't, don't you ever do anything? And yet, as he spent time with, uh, with his children and with his wife, his wife, his wife was home too, she was homeschooling the kids, um, he had a neighbor come over and say, you know, I, I don't know why, but I see you over here doing nothing, and I think of God. You see, he was just being, being who he was in Jesus Christ, and he was allowing his family to be and giving them grace. Now he defines this uh, for, for those of you who are saying, well, wait a minute, life's going to be more than that, right? It, no, nothing means not everything, but rather it means not trying to sustain a lifestyle we want, 
but not deep down. Of course we of course we don't just sit and do nothing. That's not what he's saying here. But he's saying when when we find when we look uh, for the meaning and our identity uh, in, in, the, in what we can accomplish and how fast we can move. When we, um, when we think that we'll find what we're looking for by, by how many things we can do and how fast we can live, it, it, it explodes on us. And what we end up doing is we end up living offendable because people can't help getting in the way. Go ahead. Where is life and life with God become about doing rather than about being for you. Go ahead. Jesus' offer of rest isn't simply the after you're dead variety, he says. It's a lifestyle now that invites other people out of the maelstrom. Does that make sense to you? Jesus wants us to have life right now. This unoffendable life in him, this life that, that knows grace received and grace given, this life lived in being rather than having to accomplish. And this life lived in receiving others in that grace as opposed to saying they need to do something to be right with me. Um, a while ago, uh, I was going through pictures. We have these picture um, albums, right? Jane, Jane put them together. And there was these pictures of, of when kids were young and everything. And, and I'll never forget, I, um, I probably had seen it before, but I, guess, I don't know that I had. And she put in there, Fridays, uh, um, Fridays, Brad Kassan always took off work and we spent the whole day together, the children and me, and she went on and on and on, right? And then with all the pictures, she described all the things we did in Colorado. Uh, uh, they, have all, they have all these parks uh, that are near, near Red Rocks and, and, and up in the mountains, and we did all that. We went to, to, to water parks. We did all kinds, and she described all, had all the pictures, right? And part of me felt really good about that. But what do you think my other emotion was? Guilt. Should have done it more often. It was my choice. We have to actively choose a way of life to live because otherwise we'll simply get swept along. Hurried, stressed, status driven, easily angered, and opting for madcap busyness without ever knowing why. Living the usual way, we're prone to offense simply because people can't help but stand in the way. Of what, we're start, of what we're striving to get. Does that make sense? We can choose, see? By God's grace, I chose, I wasn't gonna let anything get in the way of Fridays. Man, there were a lot of other days I could have chosen to let that thing not get in the way of, of being with family, right? We live in grace or we live thinking we have to do. Go ahead. In the gospel lesson today, I, I, I love this lesson. I, I, I don't know if you know the context there, but um, it's after the resurrection. It's, it's the last appearance of Jesus with the disciples other than when he ascended into heaven. And, and, and you know, they had uh, really fouled things up. They'd all run away. Peter denied him three times, right? I mean, they, they had a lot of things to make up, right? Jesus comes, and, and they, don't see, they don't recognize him at first, and they hadn't caught any fish. They'd fished all night, and he says, hey, hey, throw your net out there. So they got all this fish. They recognized it was Jesus. And you know what he said? He said, come and have breakfast with me. Just come and sit with me. Come and be with me. That's what the resurrected Christ says to you. Just be with me. Just do life with me. Just know my grace and live in it. 
and then calm down your heart rate and give a little grace to that other one. Have your wife or husband just spend some time with you. Have your children just spend some time with you. Have your parents just spend some time with you. Live your life just spending time and giving grace to people. It's a better way to live. It's the way of grace for you. So this week, where do you view your relationship with God not as being but as having to do? Where do you look for your value not in being in relationship with Jesus but on what and how much you can do and how fast you can do it? Where has the busyness of your life and what you do become your identity? Hear anew Jesus' words in presence of grace. Come and have breakfast. Just be with me. By grace through faith be renewed in being versus having to do. Slow down and be renewed in God's grace, resting in Jesus. And where in your relationship with others do you make it about having to do rather than being? Where do you habitually look at people this way? Where has this led you to live in anger and offense rather than unoffendable? And how's that working for you? By grace through faith, as you rest anew in Jesus, be renewed in giving the grace that you know in Jesus. Unoffendable, a better way to live, a gift from God to you. Amen.